Hey Cloud Gamers, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 has released and I thought we would give it a go on Shadow Boost and Maximum Settings. This is not a battle in the traditional sense, this is more of a comparison to show how each of the platforms run this game. Now starting off with the speed test, you can see it's been speeding along here. Shadow PC hit the title screen in 1 minute 44 with maximum settings at 134. Now, doesn't matter what rig you are on, it seems like you are in for a long load time here. Surprisingly though, Shadow Boost did hit the menu screen at 432 with maximum settings a little bit behind at 436. Now, maximum settings did get hung up on the update screen a little bit here. Nonetheless, it's about the same. So that's either a badly optimized game or just a lot of resources to load regardless of what platform you're using. And then we have the load for a runway challenge here, which I'll go into graphics in a minute. But both systems taking around a minute to load does kind of point towards the fact that the game is loading a lot of resources. It is worth pointing out that Shadow is loading medium resources, whereas maximum settings was loading the high end here. But within a minute, to be into a challenge is not too bad by any means on either machine. Moving over to the graphics comparison then. As I said, this isn't a direct comparison in the normal sense. Shadow PC was unable to run the game at high-end settings and is running on medium here on the left with maximum settings running on high-end on the right. Maximum settings was unable to run on Ultra, it was not playable, just as Shadow PC was not playable at high-end settings. You can see here that even at medium on Shadow and high-end on maximum settings, although the graphics are looking much better on the high-end, the frame rates are still sticking around the kind of 20s to 30s. It is worth pointing out that Flight Simulator does seem to be capped at 60 frames per second, as we see here, that doesn't make a lot of difference, but what does make a difference is those graphic settings with the high end really showing off the draw distance and buildings and the cloud there. As we go to Shadow PC on its own, you can see that it does dip below that 20 frames per second, even on medium, sometimes even as low as 10, but the game is playable. It does still look pretty good, although this is an extremely difficult game. I am using a mouse and keyboard here and it shows. This game could really do with a joystick and it does make me annoyed slightly that I sold my flight stick some time ago. I am very impressed that Shadow PC can play this game even at medium settings. With a few more tweaks you could probably keep those frames above 30. It is worth noting that you have to do some fiddling to get Xbox Game Pass games to install in the first place and there is a link in the description below from how I fixed this and got the game installed. What does become very apparent is that it's a very good job I'm not a pilot. As we move over to the maximum settings 2080, as I said, this is running on the high end. When it was on ultra, it was sub 10 frames per second and was not really playable. But you can see that difference immediately with the high end settings. It's still holding around the 30 frames per second mark here as we come over the buildings. Those clouds are looking absolutely fantastic and the detail on the water and also the aircraft is astounding. If this is how the 2080S is struggling to run this game, I can only imagine that the that this game was built for the Ampere 3080s plus, and it'll be great to see how that performs moving forwards. Again, you can see those frames starting to dip around the 20s as we're coming into landing. I had had quite a few practice runs on this, so this was probably one of my closer runs. However, no matter what I seem to do, I can't seem to get the landing gear to deploy properly, and therefore even when I've come in with a good approach, I seem to fail because my landing gear is not down. It is also worth 
Noting that this is running on my Mac, so playing Flight Simulator on Mac, either via shadow or maximum settings is a great novelty, and the Moonlight Streamer here really doing justice to the Flight Simulator. Look at the quality of that water as we come into land, and I thought this was one of my best approaches, until I realised my gear was still not down. Although it still would have been a pretty rocky landing. So finishing off with a little bit of side by side, again I'm pretty impressed that Shadow Boost was able to run this game at all, I did kind of count it down and out quite early, but after managing to get it to install, I'm quite happy that it is able to play it, but if you do want that higher graphical settings you are going to need something like the maximum settings 2080, if you have the Shadow Ultra or Shadow Infinite then you will probably also be able to run on those higher settings. But it looks like Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is aimed for the high-end rigs. So this will be a great benchmark for future cloud gaming rigs. As soon as they upgrade those cards, you can expect me to be looking at this game again. And I might even have to go and buy a flight stick. With the challenges and all the other modes in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I was very surprised at how fun I found it and wanted to dive in and do a few more bits and pieces but it does take a lot of practice. So you may see some more videos from me, especially as we get access to more cloud gaming rigs. But for now, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Cloud Gaming Extreme to stay up to date with all of the latest across all cloud gaming platforms. And I will see you next time.